we're going to start with the first person firing animation. So I'm going to save this as first person, I'm going to call it fire one, because we're going to use a secondary fire as well. Um, you basically have two options with your secondary fire. You can either use it for a grenade throw, um, or you can use it for something like iron sights. Um, I prefer to use iron sights, so that's the way I'm going to do this tutorial. Okay, so we're going to want to click this time configuration and change it to 21 frames. Select everything in your scene, set a frame at the very first at 0, and set a frame at 21. And then click Auto Key, go to about frame 2, and you're going to want a pretty significant backwards movement. A good um, starting point is to think of a force coming from exactly where your ejection chamber, uh, your shell ejection is and imagine that the force is going straight backwards from that point. If that point is above the shoulder, you're going to have a lot of upward movement. If it's right on the shoulder, it's going to be almost completely backwards um, because that's where the bullet's being fired from. So, let's see. What is... Oh, okay, I've got the wrong thing selected. Make sure that you don't select the IK chain. Make sure that you select the... Uh, the right wrist controller. Okay. It's also better if you don't um, have uh, translation and rotation on the same frame. Even if you just stagger it by one frame, it'll actually help tremendously if you split it up. just a little bit of sort of random rotation helps quite a bit. Once you've got sort of your initial recoil, um, then let's see, I'm going to add just a little bit of upward movement too. Alright, now I like to go a couple of frames further out to say, I don't know, 8, and move it a bit further, and also some more rotation. So it'll sort of come end up as much slower movement. Uh, that really didn't end up looking like I had wanted it to. Make sure that you don't add the ro don't accidentally add the rotation over top of one of your translation frames.
club movement in there that I'm not quite sure about. It seems to sort of pause and then go up. I'm not really sure why it does that. Alright, I'm going to go with that. So, save it. Max script, run script, um, animation exporter compact. Choose export to file and export animation. Now, navigate back to weapons, UMP 45 animations, and then save this as first person fire dash one and just leave it on JMA for now. Alright, that's your first animation. So again, save, and the next one we're going to do is, let's go with moving. So, save as first person moving. Select everything and delete all of these frames. Now, I like to use 21 frames for the moving animation as well. Um, you can use a little different if you want to. Um, but this is the way I do it. So I'm going to go to frame 5. Turn off auto key and then turn it back on. Sometimes when you save or open a file, it uh, won't actually still be on, and that'll screw up your scene if you start moving things when that's not on. So. The way I do walking animations is to go to frame 5 and move the model a little bit down to the left. At frame 10, tell it to go back to the starting point. And at frame 15, move it a little bit right and down. Okay. And then you're going to want to go in and add some rotation top of that, preferably not on the same frames that you added your translation. Like I just did. Let's see. I'm going to try doing this a little bit differently. Ah, when I uh, right click and tell it to go back to the position is at a zero, uncheck rotation. There we go. And then at 15, down and to the right. Because you don't want a rotation frame at 10. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and add some rotation. Looks like he's limping. Let's see. Got too much forward rotation there. And not enough here. Okay, I'm going to go with that. You can continue to adjust it a little if it's not quite what you want. So run script, animation exporter, compact. Let me get back to the same place. And first person 
oops, moving. But this one you're going to want to save it as a JMO, not a JMA. Otherwise it will not work. Um, JMOs take care of uh, overlays, overlay animations, which is what the moving animation is. That way it'll play on top of any other animation that's playing. Okay, so... Speaking of overlays, let's go ahead and do the overlay animation. Um, so, save as first person overlays. Select all, delete all these frames, and delete your last frame too, actually, in this case. And change the end time to 9. You only want 9 frames. And you want a frame, you want to set a frame on each of these. Now, each of these frames is going to represent something. I will include this text file with the tutorial. So, zero frame zero is just going to be your base position. Um, that's easy, you just leave it alone. Frame 2 is going to be for moving forwards. So what you're going to do is just grab your right wrist controller and move it back a bit. Oh, dang it. Turn off auto key, turn it back on. Okay, frame 2 moving backwards, so just do the opposite of what you just did. Frame 3, moving left and then moving right. So for moving left, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to move the gun right a little bit. And then for moving right, I'm going to do the opposite. Now 5 is going to be looking left. So for looking, wait, for 3 and 4, you're going to want to also add a small amount of rotation in whatever direction you move those. Now for 5, I'm going to add a bit more rotation on both the uh, Y and X axis. And then on 6, again, rotation, but in the opposite direction. Frame 7 is for looking up, so rotate the gun up a bit. Frame 8 is for looking down. And frame 9 is for sustained fully automatic firing, so move the gun back a bit and maybe a little bit up. Alright, save, run script animation exporter and save it as first person overlays and remember to change it to JMO. There you go.